Highlander's Captive by Joanne Wadsworth Narrated by Catherine Bilson Chapter 1 Dunvegan Castle, stronghold of Clan MacLeod on the Isle of Skye, autumn 1590 Julia's pulse raced as she held her flickering torch high. My brothers will be furious when they discover I overheard them speaking of this secret tunnel leading from the castle. Margaret scampered behind Julia through the sandy, treacherously wet stone passageway. I can't even believe you call this an adventure. Tis not your fault the library walls are so thin, nor their voices so loud. They should have taken more care. Never had she been so excited. Certainly the gritty walls held a sickening odour which made it hard to breathe, yet roaming this freely was an opportunity never afforded them. She stifled a giggle. Margaret dragged in a deep breath. I believe you are having far too much fun. I shall be in so much trouble should Rory find out. Which our stubborn chief won't. It isn't as if we're intending to leave MacLeod lands, just discover at which point we can. Now stop worrying and enjoy yourself. Mayhap I would if you slowed down. Margaret grasped her hand. I'm almost wishing now I'd taken your father up on his offer to join you both on his trip to Edinburgh. I long to see the finery of Holyrood House. I'm glad you didn't, and that you invited me to stay instead. Had you not, I'd have been forced to go. I noticed you jumped at the chance, although I don't understand why. Because all those courtiers speak a separate language, and Father is usually far too busy attending meetings. She'd had three seasons, and spent several weeks there each time, although within the company of Father's elder sister, a matronly noblewoman with the eyes of an eagle. Ay, but what an opportunity! Margaret's eyes widened. We'll go together on his next... Oh, do you smell that? There's a touch of salt in the air. Mayhap this tunnel comes out at the loch. I smell it too. From overhead, water dripped and splashed at Julia's feet. She stopped, caught the next drop and licked it. This is fresh, not salty. Perhaps we're on the fringe of the forest where it meets the sea to the south. I can't wait to find out where we emerge. Then keep going. We've come this far. A soft breeze made Julia's hair tickle her face. They must be so close. She whizzed past a side vent which emitted a sliver of light. Wait! Come back, Julia! Margaret peered into the vent. The scent of the sea is coming from here. She joined her cousin where Brush clogged the small opening. Here, take the torch. I'll go peek and get our bearings. She passed the flickering flame across and eyed the thick copse. She'd have to crawl through. There was no other way. She knelt and squirmed through the small gap at the side. It was a tight fit. Be careful. Margaret patted her ankle before Julia crawled beyond her reach. I will. This is so exciting. She scrambled forward, then slithered on her belly. Brambles caught at her hair, pulling pins free as she inched through. I can see that... The ground gave way underneath her. Julia! Terrified, Julia plummeted toward the sea. She grabbed for bushes but only managed leaves. No! Impact with the frigid water stole her breath. She kicked and flailed, but her skirts dragged her down as the current tossed her. So deep. This couldn't be happening. Innocent fun shouldn't end in death. Heaven's father would be lost and he'd never recover if she died. And Margaret... Oh... Her sweetly compassionate cousin might well be having a heart attack. What had she been thinking to leave the castle without a guard? Never had Rory's suffocating rules made such sense. She clawed, fighting the current, unable to give up. Too many people would be hurt by her silly actions. She couldn't die. She just... An arm clamped around her waist. She jerked around and stared into the piercing eyes of an angel. Nay, not an angel, a man fully clothed. He tightened his hold and pushed them through the hazy depths. In a slew of bubbles, they broke the surface, and she gulped in great draughts of air. Can you swim? His dark hair was plastered to his face and neck as he treaded water. Are you real? You're alive, lass, but we need to get you out of here. Can you swim? I can. She struggled for a breath. But don't let go of me. I won't. I've got you. He cut a path alongside the cliff through the churning waters. She kicked as she could, but his strength alone propelled them forward. There's a ledge here. 
Hold tight to it. She clawed the craggy rock as he heaved himself up. Then he plucked her from the pounding sea. Onto her back she flopped. Above, the sheer cliff face loomed. How had she survived that fall? She clutched the man's soggy shirt front. Still real. I can't believe what just happened. Where did you come from? That's what I should be asking you. I heard your scream, then saw you hit the water. He scanned the cliff. That was one mighty fall. I... I slipped over the edge. He wore a dagger sheathed along his wrist and a belted side sword. His chest, which her hands were in direct contact with, was hot and hard and rippled with muscles. Goodness, a warrior. I've never seen you before. She'd visited Margaret often enough to know all of their clan. Who do I have to thank for saving my life? Ivor MacDonald. He pressed calloused palms against her forehead, then her cheeks. You're cold, too cold. And why were you alone? I see no one up there. He patted his hands down her arms, then swept them over her sides and under her ribs. If anything hurts as I touch, tell me. What was a MacDonald doing on Rory's lands? I, I, she shivered. You're a MacDonald? Nought hurts. Water dripped from the long sweep of his sooty lashes. Only my lungs. She still struggled to draw in a decent breath, and when she did, it scraped painfully. That's to be expected. I'm going to need to check your lower limbs. Can you wriggle your toes? I think so. He smoothed his hands down her legs and over the tender arches of her feet. Heat raced along the path he touched. Oh, I! She jumped. I have feeling there. Your name, lass? He rose over her, cupped her face and stared into her eyes. As well as what day is it and what year? I'm lucid, just winded. She spread her hands over his. He too had come from the sea, yet his skin was hot, his body emitting warmth, which sent tingles zipping through her. My name is Julia MacLeod, and I'm cousin to the chief. Rory will pay you well for seeing to my safe return. Cousin? He crooked a brow. Interesting. I'm cold. She clamped down on her chattering teeth. Come. Let's get you out of this wind and warmed up. He slid his hands around her waist and set her on her feet. The sea's cold spray pelted into her and she burrowed against him. I don't want to get back into the water. You don't have to. Look behind you. She glanced over her shoulder and sagged in relief. This wasn't just a ledge, but a path leading around the corner, a thin one, but still a path. Is this how you got here? Aye, it was a far more enjoyable method of reaching this place than by the means you took. There was a small beach around the corner, not much, but enough for me to drag my skiff up onto. He nudged her from behind. You're safe with me. I want you to know that. Of course she knew it. He'd just saved her life, and at the peril of losing his own. She edged forward. What are you doing here? MacDonald's rarely grace our lands unless it's to fight. The feud which had raged between Clan MacDonald and Clan MacLeod had been endless. At times it simmered, but then issues would arise and it would flare up anew. I have bad news, Julia. I'm not just here to fish a fair maiden from the sea. He continued to nudge her along. I'm scouting, and never did I expect such a treasure to fall right into my hands. I'm no treasure. She quickened her step, wanting to get out of the chilling blast of the wind. Ah, Julia, you are. Blue eyes twinkling, he swung her into his arms. Oh, he was all hard angles, and she should demand he put her down. Only the heat coming off him had her snuggling closer. I also require a bargaining chip to ensure my clan has more sway over yours. You, my sweet, will make the perfect token of exchange should it be necessary. Then bargain now. Take me to Rory. He'll pay you well for my rescue. The transfer will occur once my chief deems it necessary. He strode along the ledge and around the corner. "'Twill be just you and me as we journey to Sleet. "'I can't leave. Please, take me home.' "'Tis impossible. I'm sorry, Julia, but it appears you're the reason I've come. Never had Ivor expected MacLeod would allow one of his ladies to wander unescorted beyond Dunvegan's walls. He'd hoped for a bargaining chip, but never of this magnitude. 
For her to fall literally into his arms as she had was an incredible boon. In his arms she shivered, and he tucked her in closer, providing as much warmth as he could. He had to get her covered and fast. I'll never allow any harm to come to you. Simply consider this abduction an adventure, and one far less dangerous than falling from the cliffs. You saved my life. Her long golden blonde hair caught the sunlight and shone like silk as it fluttered in the breeze, and her eyes sparkled, such a striking hue of sapphire. You can't think now to endanger it. You'll never be in any danger with me. At the end of the ledge where it sloped toward the beach, he jumped. With a soft thud, he landed on a small patch of sand. Lifting her high against his chest, he walked into the water and settled her on the wooden bench in his boat. By my honour, I give you my word. Honour aside, it must be a sin to kidnap an innocent lady. Adventure, not kidnap. Donald, his chief, would not believe the treasure he'd found in Julia when he returned with her. Call it what you will, but, oh, my goodness! She clutched her chest as she peered past him toward the beach. This is the most beautiful spot. I never knew this was here. It's a hidden alcove within the cliffs. Aye, I was intrigued when I first caught sight of it. At high tide, the water would cover the narrow beach. We're leaving now. There can be no delay. She gripped his hand. Please change your mind. My course is set. He pushed the skiff off the beach, then jumped aboard. Underneath the bench at the bow, he foraged for a fur from within his supplies. The thick brown pelt in hand, he returned to her and knelt. If this doesn't warm you, let me know. Ivor, don't do this. I can't turn this opportunity down. He wrapped the fur around her, then ensured it wouldn't work loose. You just saved my life, but save it a second time and return me to Dunvegan. Your life will never be in danger, not with me. Her heartfelt pleas would kill him, and he couldn't allow it. He grabbed the oars, settled on his seat, and rowed. Are you not cold? Her teeth still chattered. I'll dry soon enough. Daily training involved long ocean swims, conditioning him against the cold. They'll think I've drowned. She snuggled into the pelt, bringing it up to her nose. Margaret will fret terribly. Was she with you on the cliffs? Thick clumps of bushes jutted over the sheer face where the forest met the edge, but no one stood along the ridge. Nay, but fret she will. There was naught he could do about that, and now he'd cleared the alcove, he tucked the oars away, gripped the ropes and raised the sail. This skiff moves swiftly once the sail is full. You'll need to hold on to something as we hit the winds coming across the tip. It was rather rough on my journey in. Hold on to what? The wind filled the sail with a hearty slap sooner than he expected. With his feet braced wide along the side, the skiff shot off like an arrow. His captive slid across the seat and tumbled into the puddle swishing within the boat's hull. Damn, she was likely bruised enough, and he didn't need to add to her injuries. With the ropes in one hand, he pulled her up against him, then planted himself back into position along the side. Hold tight to me. The crosswinds can be dangerous. Ivor MacDonald. She clutched his waist as their side of the skiff rose out of the water. We truly need to talk. Aye, go ahead. Tis a lovely day for a chat. A chat? The wind whipped her hair in a frenzy. You just abducted me. Saved you? Abducted you? He grinned. One evens the other out, wouldn't you say? Not a chance. I love naught more than sailing. Relax and enjoy, my wee captive. He dropped a kiss on the top of her head. I, his captive, won his honour demanded he now protect, even as he delivered her to his chief. A task he was up for, in every way. Chapter 2 Why was Ivor chuckling? Relax and enjoy? How infuriating, no matter the soothing tone of his laugh. Aye, she was alive, and now his captive, though she intended to seek her release. Wind whipped through his shoulder-length hair, drying it into a rakish look. As he held the ropes, his biceps bulged, and his every muscle strained to control the wind power he'd harnessed in the skiff's tight sail. Oh, she should turn her gaze away. Only so impressive, a warrior of great strength. Mayhap she should enjoy this, since she didn't have a choice. 
she'd certainly never ridden in a boat moving at such speed that twas half out of the water. Awed by his ability, she peeked over his arm. The coastline was but a blur. Her heart near jumped out of her chest, and she clutched him tighter. How fast are we going? Faster than usual, but the crosswinds will ease off soon. Plastered against the hard planes of his body, she almost hoped they didn't. She smiled and lifted her face to the sky, allowing the moment to expand. This was life, and far more interesting than the confines of Dunvegan Castle. Not that she'd ever tell Ivor that. You look happy. I've never sailed like this before. I should think not. Ah, look, the wind is easing. Keep holding on as the boat flattens out. Sometimes it can get a bit bumpy. Waves splashed over the bow as it settled down, but naught like the jolt that had first lifted it. Ivor held the ropes and her as he jumped from the edge and into the hull. She scampered to the bench seat, patting her racing heart. Tell me how you came to be on those cliffs. Ivor tied the ropes off to hold the sail in place, then dropped in beside her. With the rudder in hand, he turned it a fraction. My father's in Edinburgh, and I didn't wish to travel so far this close to winter. Margaret, my cousin, asked me to stay. You're travelling now. A most unexpected trip, wouldn't you say? Most, he winked. But exceptionally glad for the company I am. So I see. Along this expanse of rugged coastline, the village lay nestled beyond the forest. At high tide, or on the rising and setting of the sun, half a dozen boats would be out, fishermen casting their nets. Twas unlucky all was quiet with no opportunity to raise the alarm. Although twas by far lucky Ivor had been at those cliffs. She lived now because he'd rescued her. Aye, she owed him for that. If only he'd turn this vessel around and take her home. Mayhap she needed to work some magic to make that happen. I know what you're thinking, lass. And what would that be? You're planning on how to change my mind. Of course I am. You rescued me. I sank and couldn't have kicked to the surface. You also took advantage of that. My father will fear the worst once he receives word of what happened. You'll need to inform him I survived, please. Where in Edinburgh is he? He's at Holyrood House on the King's business. Well, the last thing we want to do is get the King involved in this little abduction. I'd say that's a hearty nay to your request. You have naught to fear. Your good health is necessary for what is required. Eventually your father will see you returned home. Not good enough. Hmm, she needed to work some charm. She sidled closer and laid her hand on his leather-clad leg, prepared to offer coercion as innocently as she could. He narrowed his gaze. Now I sincerely know what you're thinking. There's more to you than what meets the eye. I'm sure of it. Tis good to see the fire in your spirit. He gripped her hand and placed it on her lap. But take care. There must be something I can say which will change your mind. My father won't forgive your lapse in judgment, and I know you're only doing this because your chief assigned you the task. When you rescued me, you risked your life for a stranger. That tells me you hold great honour. Perfect. She'd work the honour angle. Any warrior would come to the aid of a lass in trouble. I merely took a midday swim, and a pleasant one at that. Stop trivialising what occurred. You're my captive. A slow grin broke across his face. There's nothing trivial about it. She'd break his resolve. T'was only a matter of saying the right thing, which would see Ivor turning this skiff and returning her home. She was certain of it. Ivor wasn't returning her to MacLeod. Not only would her fierce chief see him tossed into Dunvegan's dungeons for what he'd done thus far, but he'd have failed his mission. His course was set. I'm feeling much warmer now. Julia lowered the fur to her lap. Her burgundy gown appeared to be drying. The white lace along the square neckline rippled in the breeze, giving him a tantalising view of creamy flesh which would usually remain hidden. He touched his palm to her cheek. Good. The chill had gone from her skin. Where do you live when not visiting Dunvegan? On the western tip of Loch Snizort, a touch north of here. She looked at him with far too trusting eyes. What of you, my rescuer? Dunscaith Castle. The boat crested a massive wave which came out of nowhere. 
he lifted her free of the bench and onto his lap as the hull slammed down. The impact knocked the wind from his lungs, but thankfully not hers. Are you all right? She skimmed with her fingers along his chest as spray blew over them. A rogue wave. I'm not surprised with these crosswinds. They can rear up again at any moment. Mayhap you should slow this vessel down. Tis best just to hold tight. I'll ensure all is well. He had a good grip on her and wouldn't let go. It won't tip? I'll not allow it. Good, then I trust you. She raised her hands to the sky and waved them. I feel like I'm flying. It's both crazy and dizzying. Is it always like this? One could never tell when the wild rides will begin. He caught her hands and brought them against his chest. Take care. I rescued you once and don't care to again. This is naught compared to when you first rounded the tip. I'm sure I'll be fine. She giggled, arched her back and gazed upward. Rory has kept Margaret and I cloistered within Dunvegan's walls these past weeks. I feared I'd grow cobwebs if I didn't get out this day. Well, out you got. Sweeping a hand around her back, he kept her from slipping off his lap. Amusement lit her eyes. Look at you. I think I'd just discovered your weak point. The little minx was doing this on purpose, testing his boundaries. Come here. Nay, I wish to fly since you have no wish to return me home. She tried to rise, only he tipped up his knees and tumbled her against him. I see I've released your adventurous spirit. Have you ever? I love this. She laughed, her rosy pink lips glistening from the spray misting the air. Hell, his groin tightened, and he barely resisted the urge to kiss her, to sample what was before him. He shouldn't have such thoughts. Julia, take care. Looking into his eyes, she stilled, then smoothed her fingertip over his lower lip. Her pupils darkened. Aye, more than a minx. I wonder. Wonder what? He cleared his throat. What it would be like to kiss you? Damn. He gulped. I've never been kissed before, but I'd like to thank you. She traced to the corner of his lower lip, then back to the centre. Her gentle caress was his final undoing. Then be prepared for one. He leaned in, brushed his lips against hers with the barest touch. Divine. Her lips were so soft, and though salt clung to her skin, he still detected the alluring scent of roses. Oh, I like, she murmured and then deepened their kiss, her mouth moulding to his. Nice. She gripped his shirt front and melted against him. What was she doing? She shouldn't be encouraging him like this. Had she not heard his warning? Mayhap Julia should have taken Ivor's warning to heart, but he'd be her lifeline to returning home. Surely a little adventure along the way wouldn't hurt. She licked his bottom lip, so dark and delicious... She dipped her tongue into his mouth and was rewarded when he crushed her closer. Oh, his body was such a hard wall of muscle, and the things he was doing with his mouth! Never had such sensations caused her to become so fixated, or her body to become this sensitive. She had to keep working this angle. Ivor! She breathed against his lips to ground herself. He was real. This moment was real. Aye, my sweet. He stroked her scalp. You want me to stop? Nay, show me what else you can do. He groaned, pressed his mouth to hers, and showed her exactly what she'd asked. Chapter 3 Ivor should have put a stop to this kiss, but every soft mule escaping Julia only encouraged him further. Their kiss grew wilder, more insistent, and unable to help himself, he circled his tongue around hers and slid deeper into her mouth. Oh, yes! She slipped her arms around his neck. I like. Hell, the level of her trust almost felled him. Except where was his honour? He jerked back, only an inch, but one valuable inch. We need to stop. Or keep going. Her lips lifted in the most delicious smile, and dimples formed either side of her luscious pink mouth. Halting would be best. He yanked the fur over her shoulders, captured her arms within the folds. You said to relax and enjoy myself. She giggled, actually giggled. The lass had no sense of self-preservation. That's exactly what I was doing. 
Right, best to set her beyond his reach. He lifted her from his lap and eased her onto the seat beside him. Don't move and don't talk. What happened to all your... Her gaze dropped to his feet. There's so much water. When did that happen? Damn. Indeed, a little water made its way in during the usual course of a trip, but never this much and never this quickly. Is this normal? Julia swung her dripping feet onto the bench. Nay, I'll have to take her in for repairs. That rogue wave. It must have cracked a board. Most of what I need will be within my supplies, though. Don't fret. I'm not. She looked deep into his eyes. I learnt that the first moment I saw you. Definitely too trusting, too giving, and far too innocent for her own good. Traits he desired. I never had a woman worked her way under his skin so quickly. He would have to make certain she didn't burrow in too deep. His mission relied on it. Ivor adjusted the rudder and sent them cruising toward land. This was good. They hadn't yet passed the southern boundary of Rory's lands, and she may have been given the best chance to sway her rescuer. She touched her lips. Oh, his kisses were positively wonderful. Hold tight. She gripped the edge of the bench. Along Skye's rocky coastline, Ivor guided their boat over the waves rolling into shore. After making land, he bounded out and roped the skiff to a boulder. Come here, I'll help you out. She scrambled onto the seat, then jumped into his arms. He caught her with a chuckle. I see you're eager to be on dry land. MacLeod land? Will we be here for some time? A few hours at most. He set her on the beach. Don't wander any further than the tree line. Wolves roam this area. I'm not scared of a wolf. As the breeze freshened, she shivered. Autumn would soon give way to winter, and the days would grow shorter and colder. The wolves are becoming scarce on Sky. Have you not heard? Scarce or not, I don't need you falling prey to one. He tipped up her chin. Give me your word you'll do as I say. I want to go home. Give me your word you'll take me. One day I shall. No further than the stream. I promise. The stream gurgled into the sea. Just you worry about the boat, and I'll worry about the wolves. She tramped along the shore, then lowered herself to her knees and splashed her face and neck, removing the salt from her skin. Ivor wasn't watching, and discreetly she tore a strip from the hem of her gown, then wedged it between two rocks. If only she could do more. Julia, Ivor waved her over. On her feet, she walked across the beach. Did you find the leak? Aye, it was a crack, as I suspected. He removed some tools in a sealed pot, then worked blackened goo between two planks. That's going to stop the leak? It surely will after it's had a few hours to set. He searched the coastline. I'd prefer to have more miles between MacLeod and I before nightfall, but I doubt he'll come this far when he'll wish to scour the area nearest the cliffs first. I don't believe I was seen. He tidied his tools away, tossed a blanket over his arm, and removed a snare from a chest under the bench seat. We're staying to eat? You're not hungry? Very. Perfect. Cooking would take time, and more was exactly what she needed. She'd drag this meal out. Your expression is completely readable. Ivor grasped her hand and led her into the woods. If you see any twigs, collect what you can while I set the trap. Is there anything else I can do to help? She foraged at the base of a tree and loaded her arms with twigs. That'll do. We'll build a fire closer to the shore. I need to keep an eye on the waterways. He dug a hole then over stringy dried bark, struck a piece of flint with his dirk. Breathing on the sparks, he coaxed them to life. The fire crackled and blazed as he added her twigs and a log from nearby. She spread out the blanket he'd brought and tucked herself close to the fire. I'll return in a moment. Watch out for the wolves. He strode off toward his snare. The sun sank over the ocean's horizon, yellow melding into dusky pink, then inky blue. So beautiful. Never had she experienced nature at its most glorious like this. Snuggling her knees to her chest, she relaxed as the fire's brilliant orange and red flames warmed her. She shouldn't be enjoying herself this much, but this day had been shocking, thrilling and full of new surprises. Of course she had to return home. Rory would search for her until found, 
and she couldn't leave Margaret in a state of panic, which she'd undoubtedly be in. And father, Rory would send word to him and he'd be made aware. Oh, he'd blame himself for leaving her behind if he thought that had led to her capture. Ivor would be in a world of trouble, yet despite all that had happened, she'd still not change this day. Ivor was an adventurer alone, and one she didn't care to set aside. He intrigued her, far more than any man ever had. There was something about him. You appear deep in thought. Rabbit in hand, Ivor dropped down beside her. She jumped. I was thinking about my family, as well as you and what I've seen today. I'm beyond curious. Tell me about your family. Do you have any brothers and sisters? I'm the eldest of three. He skinned the creature, then set it to cook over the fire. And? He couldn't leave it at that. Please, I'd like to know more about the man who... Dare she say it? Aye, they'd bonded, and she'd use it to her advantage. Kiss is like a dream. Ah, lass, you're tempting fate with such words. Lazing on his side next to her, he smiled. I have two sisters, quite young. Rascals the both of them, and quite often under my feet. I'd love to have siblings. What's it like? They were born to father's second wife after mother passed. They're a delight, that's when they're not climbing trees and shocking their parents. I'm forever being called upon to get them down. Come here. Your hair is tangled from the wind and will be knotted something fierce if I don't fix it. He tugged her in front of him, positioned her back to his chest, then trapped her in place with his legs. Gently, he smoothed out one lock after another. You have the most beautiful hair. It catches even the firelight and glows like spun gold. It does? Did he feel this bond as strongly as she did? Please let it be so. The flames danced before her and she took a calming breath. He held her so close and she wished for more. What else do your sisters do? I'd rather talk about you. You said you have no siblings and I've only heard you mention your father. Aye, it's only father and me. My mother died not long after my birth and father never remarried. He loved her so deeply. Are you too close? Exceedingly. She twisted around and looked at him. There's no telling what he'll do once he hears what's happened to me. Naught will happen. Your safety is guaranteed. That doesn't change the fact you abducted me. I'm well aware of what I did. With a low growl, he slid her hair over her shoulder. I'm also aware of how much I like touching you. Such conflict raged deep within his eyes. Do you feel it? As I never have before. He nuzzled her neck. I want more. So do I, and I'm fast becoming fascinated with you. She couldn't deny the stirrings in her heart. Kiss me. He took her mouth with his, and it sent heat bursting through her veins. You taste so sweet, Julia. He kissed her harder, and then groaned as if in pain. What's wrong? His groin grazed her hip. Oh, he was hard, very hard, and no more than clothes separated them. Does that hurt? To the point of pain since you've fed my need for you. He kissed her again, long and slowly. Pain sizzled through her too, making her itch to get closer, to seek the ultimate contact with his body. Hell, you're so sweet, so responsive. Kissing surely can't hurt. She wound her fingers in his dark hair and sank into him. All she wanted was more. I'm hungry, Ivor. Chapter 4 Cool air swept Julia's damp skin as Ivor slowly lifted himself from her. Her limbs had gone to mush and her heartbeat still sped, but she pushed open her eyes and stared at the twinkling stars overhead. Fly she had, and burst far outside her body. Never had she yearned so greatly for a man's touch, and to touch him in return. Something powerful and magical had passed between them. Even now he lay so close, yet it wasn't close enough. Are you all right? He wrapped an arm around her waist and rolled her into his side. The contact with his skin sent tingles racing through her body to her fingertips and toes. I fear I'm having the most outrageous thoughts. Oh, the things they'd just done. She rested her hot cheek on his chest. Yet I would still like more of our time. As would I. He cradled her close, pressed his mouth to her temple. Julia, we need to talk. About? 
I can't take you from your home. After this, I see that more clearly. You're going to return me? She edged onto her elbows and searched his gaze. This was what she'd longed for. Are you certain? If I'm going to keep you, I'll have to let you go first. How quickly can you clothe yourself? I don't care to back down from this decision. Fast? She nabbed her gown, eased it over her head, and laced the stays. He was taking her home. Even elated, her chest ached. Their time had only just begun. He wished to keep her. Please, let our time not be over. Are you ready? Aye. Now dressed, he caught her around the waist and held her close. His gaze locked on hers, and the force of his need sent a rush of heat spiralling through her. Then let's get you home. We didn't eat. She stroked the swath of plaid he'd donned over his chest, fastened with a silver pin, itching to slip her fingers inside his white linen shirt and begin again what they'd just finished. We'll eat while we sail. He retrieved their meal, extinguished the fire and grabbed the blanket. Of course. That would be for the best. Let's go. He slid his hand down her back and guided her toward the skiff. On board, she settled across from him as he gripped the oars. The wind had eased as the night had fallen, and he rowed for some time before the breeze picked up. Once he'd raised the sail and secured the ropes, he dropped in beside her and removed the rabbit from the soft green leaves he'd wrapped it in. Are you hungry? Very. Although, it seemed, only for him. I'm sorry for the rush. He tore off a chunk of meat, slipped the morsel between her lips, then took a chunk for himself. I understand, and your repair is holding. That wasn't the rush I was speaking of. Eyes sparkling in the moonlight, he tucked a flyaway strand of hair behind her ear. Oh, that kind of rush. I can't stand that I'm sailing toward Dunvegan. Mayhap you need a distraction, then. I know I do. I'm already far beyond distracted. This new storm of sensation he'd unleashed had her wanting to rip his clothes off, and explore his body all over again. She longed to be back by that fire, completely unclothed, and... Oh, how could a man have brought these feelings out in her so quickly? Is this a dream, Ivor? Nay. He brushed his lips over hers and drenched her in his heat. You've spun me straight into an exquisite realm of enchantment. Thank you for coming for me. He chuckled. Which time, lass? It seems both. She kissed him again, her warrior saviour, the man who'd plucked her from the sea before diving right into her heart. The stars were just the beginning. The urge to lay Julia across the bench and make her his infused every inch of Ivor's body. He kissed her, and her soft moans incited his need to strip her and ravish her senseless. He should have his hand on the rudder and staying their course, not sliding his fingers along the silky flesh of her calves in an attempt to lift her skirts. She deserved more. A bed, for starters, and following that, a night of endless pleasure. We should stop. At least he hadn't beached his boat in the dark. Not yet. She clutched his head and brought his mouth to hers. Any more and I'll never stop. He lowered his mouth to her neck and sucked on her skin. Bad move. He needed to divert his gaze. We've got so little time left. She glanced toward land, and her expression fell. The village is just through there. Aye, Dunvegan lies five miles ahead. You can't take me all the way home. If Rory saw you... She shuddered. The village will... A horn sounded with one long and eerie blast. Damn. Several men on horseback rode along the rugged coastline. Moonlight bathed them in its bright glow. He'd never expected a scouting party to ride at night, nor be this close so soon. On his feet, he hauled the sail down. Julia gasped. They've already seen it. Get down. It's too late. She pointed to a Berlin moving stealthily along the coast. At the helm, a watchman motioned toward them, then a loud roar went up from the captain. The Berlin sail unfurled and caught the wind. It's Rory. Hell, this was his fault. Had he not been so focused on Julia, he'd have been doing as he should have and kept an eye out. You have to outrun him. Eyes wild, she clutched his shirt front. Turn us around and hoist that sail back up. His skiff was small and light, 
The winds were not favourable enough to escape a Berlin manned by a score of warriors intent on retrieving their kin. Julia had been seen, and the alarm raised. I promised to bring you home, and I don't break my promises once given. Ivor, nay, move this boat. My decision is made. I'll suffer the consequences of my actions. You will not. I won't see you harmed. I never agreed to that. She shot to her feet and dove off the boat. Surfacing ten feet away, she shoved back her hair and glared. I can tread water until they arrive. Make your escape. Seek your safety. What the hell was she trying to do? You can't rescue me. I can and I will. I'm a good swimmer. Now go. Huh, not from my experience, you're not. Gritting his teeth, he unbelted his plaid, tossed it across the seat, then sprang off the side. He surfaced nose to nose with her. Let's get one thing straight. You will never, ever leave me in such a manner again. This is your chance. Take it and go. You can see I'm fine. I don't care if you can swim the entire length of the sound. I'm not leaving you. You're mine to care for. You have been since the moment I saw you. She sobbed and pushed him away. As you're mine, but there's no way to explain why I'm with you. Please. Her chin trembled. Go, for both our sakes. Listen to me, Julia. Even with his enemy bearing down on him fast, his soul ached to keep hold of this woman and never let her go. I'm staying with you. This is so... The waves sloshed and bumped them against each other. Impossible! Or completely possible. I'll figure something out. You've weaved a spell around my heart and I can't see beyond you. She wrapped her arms around his neck and he gladly took her slight weight. I could either kiss you or slap you right now. He chuckled. I'd rather go with the... Julia! MacLeod stood at the helm of his boat, his gaze targeted on them. Lower the sail, all men to oars, the MacLeod chief bellowed. Julia, Ivor whispered, I would like to offer for you. Would you do me the great honour of... She clapped a hand over his mouth. Are you mad? This is not the time. She shot a look toward MacLeod. I'll think of something to say. Let me handle this. The fury raging across MacLeod's face had him gritting his teeth. The MacLeod chief was a staunch warrior with a clever mind. He'd never be able to talk his way out of this dilemma. His time to atone for what he'd done had arrived. Chapter 5 Rory was almost upon them, and naught could have frustrated Julia more. Lips pinched into a tight white line, Rory leaned one thick arm over the side of the Berlin. The man was a fierce fighter, but never had her cousin seemed more imposing than at this very moment. "'Come here now!' he snapped. I'll be right behind you, lass. Ivor gripped her waist and boosted her upward. She grasped Rory's hand and he lifted her into the boat. Where the hell have you been? Rory clutched her shoulders, then growled and dragged her into his arms. I've been so worried. What were you and Margaret thinking? We weren't, she mumbled into the massive wall of his chest. I'm so sorry. Ivor MacDonald rescued me after I fell into the sea. A MacDonald? He whipped her behind him, then withdrew his sword. Nay, she grabbed his wrist. He pulled me from the depths and saved my life. You can't hurt him. He jerked a look at his second-in-command. Fish him out of the water. Ivor was yanked into the boat as Rory stormed toward him. Explain yourself, MacDonald. She raced around Rory. He doesn't have to explain anything. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for him. You have to listen to me, Rory. If a MacDonald's involved, then there is little listening required. Stay back, Julia. Ivor swung her behind him, then advanced on Rory. Great. Two fierce warriors coming head to head, and she had to make them see reason. After ducking under Ivor's arm, she planted herself between the two men. First of all, I'm not moving, and second, you're both listening. To me. She glared from one to the other, then straightened to gain some height on their towering forms. Please. Rory snorted, then eyed one of his men. Secure the skiff to the stern. MacDonald comes with us. To her, he commanded. Begin. She faced him. 
I fell from the cliffs, not far from where Ivor had beached his boat. He dove in to save me when I couldn't kick to the surface. I couldn't breathe and I couldn't move. I would have drowned if it weren't for his fast action. The fact MacDonald was on my land tells me exactly what I need to know. Rory clenched his fists. Ivor was visiting family and lost his bearings. I was no better with mine. I must have hit my head and everything was rather confusing. I told Ivor to take me to the village. I thought it was closest and then we ran into difficulties. Speak of these difficulties. Rory's gaze narrowed to slits. His boat sprang a leak so we made landfall for him to effect repairs. While I rested my mind cleared, enabling me to tell him who I was and where he should take me. She gripped Rory's hand. The news I was your cousin unsettled him, but still, as soon as he'd finished mending the skiff, he immediately set sail to bring me home. That is some tale. Tis the truth. Then why did I see you jump from his boat if not to escape him? I was worried how things appeared. Tears burned behind her eyes, then trickled free. She had to make Rory believe her. I feared your anger. I jumped so he had a chance to get away. As you saw, he dived right in after me. He's a MacDonald, but one of the most honourable men I've ever met. I would have drowned this morn if not for him. Don't cry, lass. You're safe now. He wiped her cheeks with his thumbs, then eyed her Ivor. Is it as she says? I have family further north in Trotanish, and my boat sprang a leak. I am aware our clans are at war, but I have no intention of raising arms against you or your men, now or in the future. His gaze settled on hers. I've never met a woman who spoke more honestly in my life. In the short time we've been together, I've also learnt I don't want that time over. What? Rory's jaw dropped. Over my dead body, and her father's as well. He speared his second with a look. Bind him securely to the mast. Gag him as well. I've no wish to hear any more of his drivel. He strode away. Rory, please, she chased him to the stern. You have it all wrong. Nay, you aren't aware of the lengths my enemy will go to. Your father will be informed of what's occurred and will await his arrival. He swamped her in a blanket, then sat her between two of his men. Aye, she was well aware of the lengths the MacDonald would go to, but Ivor was different. He'd changed his mind and now she'd work on altering Rory and Father's too. She'd make them understand, and save her rescuer as he'd saved her. She had to. Ivor paced Dunvegan Castle's topmost tower room overlooking the loch. One narrow window afforded him some air, but not an escape path with its sheer drop of fifty feet to the hard-packed ground. Well, never had he been in such a predicament. He'd expected MacLeod to toss him into the dungeons upon their arrival, except Julia had begged the man for leniency, and it appeared he held a soft spot for her. The dank chamber was bare of all but a blanket and chamber pot, but at least he'd been afforded a meal to break his fast each morn this past fortnight. The bolt clunked, and the wooden panelled door swung wide as the guardsman appeared. A warrior tossed him a pair of trues and a tunic as a lad scuttled in and set a pitcher, bar of soap, and a drying cloth on the dusty floor. The guard stroked his side-sword's hilt. Gavin MacLeod has returned from Edinburgh to decide your fate. The lady requested these amenities. Present yourself, and be quick. Time for his atonement, and one where he'd fight for Julia. After stripping, he washed himself, then dressed. Scraping his itchy, whiskered jaw, he eyed the man's dirk. I wouldn't mind a shave. I don't suppose you'd loan me your blade? You could consider it a last wish and all. I don't believe so, the guard smirked. I'll shave you. Julia bustled in with another guard, her ruby skirt swishing about her. Hell, she was here? He'd pleaded with the guard each day for word of her, to assure himself she'd not suffered any ill health from her repeated sea dunkings. The guard had berated twas none of his business. He looked his fill of the woman who'd consumed his thoughts, from her mane of golden blonde hair to her lush lips, and the sparkling blue of her. Why were her eyes so dull and red-rimmed? "'What's happened? You've been ill?' "'The dagger, please,' she implored the guard. "'He won't harm me, and we both know neither of you will allow it either. "'Every man should receive his last wish.' "'Certainly, my lady.' "'The guardsman shoved him back until he sat on the window sill. "'The other guard passed her the soap, 
then slid his sword free and pressed it against his chest. Julia lathered his jaw. After taking the blade from the guard, she brushed against him, held the dirk close to his skin, then ran it in a smooth line down. Her sweet scent of white roses floated around him, and he fought the desperate urge to drag her into his arms. Tell me, lass, are you well? Father has arrived, and so far he won't listen to reason. Did you expect him to? You must defend your actions. Tears welled in her eyes, and she quickly blinked them away. And tis my fault you must do so. He savoured her closeness as she turned his cheek and drew the blade along the next portion from his ear to his chin. I wouldn't change what happened between us. You're home with your clan, and this is where you belong. I also belong with you. She pressed her hand to his chest, curled her fingers in tight. Fight for me, as I will. Step away from MacDonald, Julia. A man with grey streaked hair and an impeccably fitted jacket strode into the chamber. He needed a shave, and there's something you must know, father. After passing the guard the dirk, she dried his sudsy face, whispering, we fight together. Twas time. Father had loved mother. Surely Julia could make him bear witness to her devotion to Ivor. Staring into her captor's soulful eyes, she allowed her love for him to flow free. Since you returned me, every moment we've been apart has been a burden. You saved my life, but now I float adrift. He stroked her cheek, and the guard pressed his blade harder into his chest. He grunted. I don't know what I've done to deserve you, but my heart aches with love. He slowly lowered himself to one knee, the guard's sword scraping upward toward his neck. Julia, I attempted to ask this of you before, and now I can no longer wait. I wish to take you as my wife, to never allow you out of my sight again. What would you answer in return? Her mind raced with only one answer, the knowledge pulsing through her. She dropped to her knees. I love you too. And I, I'm up for any adventure you'd like to embark on. Show me how high we shall fly and I will journey with you. Julia, nay! Her father shot forward. You can't love him. He's a MacDonald. I've told you I do. Wouldn't you give your life to have Mother back? Because that's what he did for me when he rescued me from the depths of the ocean. And again, when he returned me to Dunvegan. You must see how honourable Ivor MacDonald is. There is no other I could love but him. Nay, father couldn't take away the one man who should be hers. Looking stricken, he shook his head. We spoke about this. We did, but you've yet to listen to me. I can't lose him. Grant this betrothal and allow us to wed. What you're asking of me? He drew her to her feet, gripped her hands. Are you sure you feel this strongly? Mayhap this is a passing fancy? I love him, as mother loved you. She kissed his cheek. Hear me out, and give me my heart's desire. Don't rob me of what could be. I beg it of you. Please. Damn it, I've only ever desired the best for you. He squeezed her hands, then slowly slid his gaze to Ivor. I won't abide my daughter's emotions being played with. Is this love you speak of true? Aye, I would give my life for your daughter's. She holds my heart in her hands, and I never wish to relinquish it. I ask for your daughter's hand, and for your blessing. I ask for your approval too, father. Heavens, what more could she say to convince him? Mumbling, he paced the chamber, then stopped before the guardsman. Lower your weapons and leave us. They filed out. MacDonald Julia is my only child, and her happiness means the world to me. If you wish to court her, I will allow it because she has asked. But should you crush her heart, I shall rip yours out. Squealing, she swamped him in a hug. Does that mean we have your blessing? Had he truly relented? He patted her back. As it did in your mother's eyes for me, I see the depth of your love shining. So I, tis given, though reluctantly so. You've taught me how to love. I've no greater example than you. I love you too, lass. He kissed the top of her head, then sighed, extending his hand to Ivor. All of this aside, t'was clear you saved my daughter's life, that her feelings for you are strong. We shall join forces to ensure she never endangers herself again. 
Ivor shook his hand. Thank you, sir. Your daughter is not one to give up the fight. Like her mother before her, one of the greatest battlers of all time. He tweaked her chin. I shall see you both downstairs, my fighter. You may have a moment, but no longer. As he marched from the chamber, he grumbled. A MacDonald! I shall never live this down. Grinning, Ivor gripped her waist, toppled her against him. I'm going to take every advantage of this moment, although remind me to never take you on in a battle again. You would certainly lose. Her heartbeat pounded anew. Advantage now to you. Kiss me. I love. Twill be hard to stop once I start, but naught will hold me back. He seized her mouth with his, and with unmistakable passion, kissed her until she flew. Aye, this warrior had captured her, heart, body and soul. Adventure. They would have a lifetime to experience it all. Chapter 6 Peace flowed through Julia as she leaned against Ivor's chest and fingered her sapphire skirts. His knees held her captive as the white-tipped waves of the Cullen Sound rolled in. Above, a wisp of cloud breezed across the brilliant blue sky. This was their place, where they'd made landfall to repair his skiff a short two months ago. The most special place on earth. You seem so calm, love. He slid his hand around her waist as he rubbed his chin atop her head. You truly don't mind visiting Dunscaith after the fall? Tis your home, and I'll be with you. Yesterday father had agreed to their betrothal, and they'd set to work on the wedding preparations and obtaining a special licence. In a sen night she'd be Ivor's wife. Poor Rory, though. He'd been flabbergasted by father granting Ivor permission to court her, but in the time since he'd too come around as her warrior had shown his devotion. Shuffling around, she faced him with a grin. Thank you for bringing me here. It took some persuasion to get your father to agree to this particular outing, although it won't be long before I'll have you all to myself. No more sneaking around in order to have my wicked way with you. He gave her a long, heated look, one which always sent heat coiling through her. Sneaking is fun, an adventure all in itself. She gripped his thighs as she leaned in. We're not sneaking around right now. Tis daylight. That didn't stop you yesterday. She glanced at his lap, at the heavy bulge making its presence known. Ah, I see you recall our walk in the forest. And I will never forget. He brushed with a finger along her gown's sweetheart neckline, then played with the white ribbons. My tongue still tingles from the taste of you, and my mouth waters for more. So many ways they'd loved each other, although not once had he slid himself deep inside her. He'd said that would occur once they were wed. What has that dreamy look on your face? He tugged on the ribbons and she toppled into him. It's intensifying my ache. Would you like me to aid you in easing it? I'm rather agreeable to doing so. Always my captive. He kissed her long and deeply. Aye, his captive, in every way, and equally so, he was hers. Oh yes, the captured had become the captor and never would she let him go. The End This has been Highlander's Captive by Joanne Wadsworth Narrated by Catherine Bilson Copyright 2014 Audiobook Production Copyright 2020 Highlander's Captive is a novella in the Highlander Heat series which begins with Highlander's Castle. You can find more information about all Joanne's books by visiting her website at joannewadsworth.com.